tonight on this very special live show, we got to talk about the Michigan Wolverines winning the program's first national championship in 26 years. Got to take it back to 1997 and Lloyd Carr for the last time that we looked up and saw Michigan is truly the best team in all of college football. And let's get started with just what that means, like laying that out. So in the last three years, we've seen Jim Harbaugh slowly build toward this moment, along with a Michigan staff that continued to get better. We've also seen them put things in their own way and then turn those things into obstacles and then turn those things into obstacles that they overcome, okay? I think it's all the way back to 2020 when they did not play the game and Michigan finished a COVID-ridden season two and four. We didn't even know that Jim Harbaugh was going to be the head coach at Michigan in 2021. He had interviewed for the Minnesota Vikings job. He had flirted with other NFL jobs. Yet and still, that team in 2021 turned into a powerhouse and a juggernaut and began a three-year run where they beat Ohio State, they win the Big Ten title, and they make the college football playoff. And with each season, they continue to get better. And now they have reached the ultimate in winning the college football playoff national championship, becoming the first Michigan team to win a national championship in the CFP era. And they really went about this in a truly Michigan fashion, right? So we're talking about a Michigan team that heading into the Washington game, we still weren't actually sure that they were good enough to win this game, despite beating Ohio State, beating Penn State, beating a great Iowa team in the Big Ten title game, and then dispatching the team that knocked off the team. So in the win against Alabama in the Rose Bowl, they also knock off not just the SEC champion, but the team that stopped the two-time defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs in what was a 29-game SEC win streak. So you already know you're getting the class competition. They go to Pasadena. They win a game that has always been a Big Ten game against the sainted Nick Saban, and they get to this game, National Championship in Houston, we're reading about how the, le- the the roof is leaking because it's storming in Houston, and it seemed to be like, oh, okay, we're going to have running weather. And that's exactly what we had. We had running weather indoors. All you got to do is look at the Michigan box score. Now, I'm going to get into the rushing yards, and I'm g- certainly going to get into the scoreboard because if you're looking at the scoreboard a couple years from now, and you see that the final score is 34 to 13, you could probably go, did, did they blow out Washington in that game? Was Washington outmatched? No, far from the truth. This game was tight all the way until the middle of the fourth quarter with about six minutes left to play. You could see that Washington still had a way here. They're down two scores. They go get six. Maybe they can take the ball back from Michigan, give Michael Penix Jr. the opportunity to do what he had done in every single one-score game that he has been a part of this season at Washington and go win the football games. The reason why many of us were going, oh, wait, Washington likes to be in these tight games. They get it to a one score game and you give the ball back to number nine. They got an opportunity to go win this. But that was a welcome surprise as when we got started with this game, it felt like Michigan was absolutely going to destroy the Washington Huskies. I mean, my goodness. We're talking about a Michigan team that came out guns a blazing. A Donovan Edwards who had been in witness protection, showed up against the Washington Huskies and hit him up style for a 41-yard rush TD and then a 46-yard rush TD. And all of a sudden, the man is averaging 43 and a half rush yards per rush and a TD per rush. This is a man who had rushed for 52 ga- uh, 52 yards and one TD as a season high this year before going up against this Washington Huskies front seven. And then you got to see Blake Corum get in on the act, right? They end up with two guys that rush for 100 yards, becoming the first program to have two 100-yard rushers in a national championship game in the college football playoff era. And I'm looking at this, and I'm going, wait, Michigan should be up by way more. It's like watching a boxing uh, match and then looking at the dude that's losing going, there should be more blood here. And there just wasn't, right? I expected Michigan to be up by three, four TDs, and Washington to find a way to get back. I mean, at one point, Michigan had gained 235 yards before it faced its first third down. But that turned out to be the magic down for the Washington Huskies because once they got Michigan into third down situations, Michigan just could not convert those third down situations. We're talking about going into the third quarter with 318 left when J.J. McCarthy basically takes off on his own to pick up a third and eight to convert the first third down 
for the Michigan offense all day long, and yet still, they never trailed in this ball game. They were in complete control. Even when it looked like Washington was finding its footing, either Michigan would make a play or Washington would not. Like, this was weird because Michael Penix Jr. has been accurate all year long, and he has been really great at getting the ball out of his hands. As a matter of fact, he gets the ball out of his hands 2.7 seconds per pro football focus. And that's the best of anybody in the sport. It's one of the reasons why that Washington offensive line won the Joe Moore award is because that dude did not take any sacks. He had 11 sacks all year long and none against Texas. And going into this, I was, I was thinking if Michigan get, can get home with four, then it's going to be a long day at the office for Washington and offense. And it was because it's not just that they were able to get pressure and hurry Michael Penix Jr. into not just throws that were inaccurate, but short throws, not allowing a single explosive play of 20 yards or more in the first half. That is the first game in the Washington era with Kalen DeBoer as head coach for which that happened, where you go a whole half without them hitting you up for at least 20 yards on an explosive play. Then we take into that uh, into account here that Michael Penix Jr. is not just being sped up and having to dump the ball, but all of a sudden, it looked like the Washington Huskies were the Kansas City Chiefs. And by that, I mean dropping the football. That man would put it on them, and they couldn't bring it in. Romo Dunzi, who was probably the second best wide receiver in the country, the best wide receiver in the country to some, had an opportunity to make an explosive play, missed the catch. That could have been six for them. I also got to see just these really bad opportunities missed. We got to see perhaps Romo Dunzi make a great play in the fourth quarter, and then you get a holding call, right? These penalties were bugaboos all night long for the Washington Huskies. And you could also see that the pressure that Michigan was able to generate was absolutely getting to that offensive line is they're getting false starts. They're trying to get off the ball because they know they're getting beat. And Kenneth Grant having his way, Mason Graham having his way, Mike Sandra still not just had the pick six to seal it, uh, to seal it, but had the matchup. That dude was matched up against Romo Dunzi and he held his own. He held Romo Dunzi in check. We're also talking about a Washington offense that's used to throwing for three bills. It wasn't going to get close to that against this Michigan defense. All while, on the offensive side of the ball, Sharon Moore said to his offensive line, I'm going to put it on y'all. Can you go win us a national championship? And they said, we got you. It, at one point, I'm looking up, and it's not the 436 total yards that Michigan had. It was the 300 plus on the ground. Like, that's a gaudy number in a national championship game. I understand that Washington's got the 43rd best rush defense in the country coming into this one, but what they had been able to do was keep a lid on the end zone and give themselves an opportunity to win this thing late, but you can't do that if you're getting gashed the way they were getting gashed. And it wasn't as if Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum were just running through tackles. It was They were running through wide-open holes, right? We got to see Kalel Mullings also having some of this because they got these things blocked up like you read about moving people from point A to point B against their will. And they did this with a depleted offensive line. And they did this with a quarterback that didn't throw for 200 yards once again, but also didn't turn the ball over. That has been what J.J. McCarthy has done best. He has made a play with his legs when it's counted, and he has not thrown the ball to the other team as often as he does in the past, right? And that was, I think, the difference in this game. It was, can Michigan create turnovers? Yes. They created two interceptions of Michael Penix, one luck, right? You're able to be in the right place at the right time. The other one, Mike Sandwich still made a play and sealed the victory for the Michigan Wolverines. And then on the other side of the ball, Michigan just took care of it. J.J. didn't put it on the ground. Blake didn't put it on the ground. Donovan didn't put it on the ground. And even when their receivers weren't absolutely making plays, like say Cornelius Johnson dropping a pass here or there, you got to see Colston Loveland come up with a huge play in the fourth quarter to give them an opportunity to go salt this game away. Got to see Roman Wilson make it a play, right? They had their guys show up when they need them in the most Michigan ways possible, which is only enough to go win the football game. Not necessarily enough to convince you that they are dominant. And yet, if you look at their resume, they are 15 and 0. They had already achieved what no Michigan team had ever, winning 14 games in a, in a season. And they had an opportunity to really supplant the Jim Harbaugh legacy. And I'm going to, if you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.